Hello and welcome to European Universalist 4. I am Lord Forant, here with a guide on how to play Castile and probably how to play Castile into Spain. So, Castile is one of the relatively larger European powers. They start off as 8th in the world in, um, in terms of great power ranking. Um, they are located on the Iberian Peninsula in southwest Europe, in case people are curious if it wasn't already apparent. And they have the potentials to develop probably one of the largest empires in the game without fighting too many wars about it, which is kind of impressive. So at the beginning of the game, you are one of the three, or should I say four, Catholic countries in Iberia. Navarra will quickly be vassalized either by you, who can do it pretty much from the beginning, or by Aragon, or by France. And it's only one province, but they will disappear relatively quickly. And then in the bottom of Iberia, there's the one little remaining uh, Muslim province country of um, Granada, part of the um, Moors that used to rule most of Iberia back in the days of the Crusader Kings game. So at the beginning of the game, you have got a mission called Finish the Reconquesta, which if you complete it, which is pretty much kill, J kill Granada, you get an initial 15% morale and 15% manpower recovery speed, which is pretty insane early on because you already start with 15% morale, so that would be 30% morale early on, which is very powerful. Uh, as Castile, you're part of the whole Spanish country, um, so you have lots of rich history, so you're going to be getting lots of random events, of ministers, events, rulers. There's a couple that are really useful, specifically there's the Iberian Union event, which is if either Castile or Aragon has, I think it's a female or male heir or ruler, there's a chance for the event to fire which will allow Castile, if they pick the right decision, which there's two, it's pretty obvious which one to pick, uh, you'll get a personal union over Aragon, and if Aragon still has a junior partner in Naples, you'll get control over both Aragon and Naples. And then it's just a simple matter of waiting until Admin Tech 10, and you can click that button, and you will inherit Aragon immediately, so there's no need to uh, integrate them and lose diplomatic power, and you will form Spain, um, which is really powerful, because the, the Spanish new tradition and ambitions, if I remember, are the same as, yeah, Castile's Spanish ideas. So it allows you, if you're Aragon, to flip to the Spanish ideas. So in terms of positioning, you're pretty good. You've got a route to expansion to the south. To the north, you've got France and England, which you can invade France, but France is always going to be a massive powerhouse. A lot of times I go out of my way to try and royal marriage my way into an alliance with France, which is pretty easy. All you have to do is set England as a rival, and France will love you. And uh, France, usually, if you're allied to them, will stay happily on their side of the Pyrenees and just fight wars in Europe against England and Austria, so that's nice. Uh, you could try and steal some of England's provinces, um, but on the other hand, France also has cores on them and then will get annoyed with you. Um, so to the north is a lot harder. To the east, you can't really get there until you inherit Aragon or Naples, but once you do, you can freely invade Italy. There is an event called the Burgundian Succession. If the Burgundy loses a war between is losing a war between 15 for between 1444 and 1500, there is a chance that their ruler dies. Their land is split up. France gets a couple provinces, and then either Austria or you will get the remaining Burgundian provinces. So the Dutch Lowlands and Luxembourg over here, which is really nice because it gives you access to the Dutch which will a lot more trade and development and if you want to you can try and invade the HRE. There's in fact achievement which is called Spain as Emperor which as Spain become Emperor of the HRE like they did historically but the only way you're going to do that is during wars of religion. So overall my advice is go south. Now I have a different strategy for the start of Castile's games than most other players do. I advise not invading Granada, even though you have missions for them. I advise you claim, and if Tlemcen doesn't have really powerful allies, you invade Tlemcen before you invade Granada. Reason being, uh, Tlemcen has below 100% war score cost for all their provinces, so you can just outright vassal them, 
which is absolutely amazing because then you have a Muslim nation under your control in North Africa, which means you can freely invade Morocco, Tunis, all these nations. Just hand them to Tlemcen, make Tlemcen a march, and Tlemcen will safely and easily control the region for you and provide a fair amount of troops for wars. And then later on in the game, once they take religious ideas, as most nations inevitably do, you can force them to switch to being Catholic, and they will convert the lands for you, and then you can always revoke the march or not make them a march in the first place, and then annex them, and they will take it all over. Another reason not to conquer it all yourself is the wonderful increased coring cost of all the Berber nations over here. 50% um, cost to core the provinces, which means it's a lot more expensive than it looks to take their lands which usually means no one ever conquers this region outside of the nations existing within it. But if you take Tlemcen, then they can help you with the wars with Morocco and Tunis. Um, the only way you are not able to conquer North Africa is if you lose a naval bat, you lose the navy, naval battles, and you lose your navy to either Morocco or Tunis, because then they'll just blockade the Strait of Gibraltar, and if uh, they've occupied Ceuta here, you can't cross into their lands. But if you owe Tlemcen, they'll usually get preoccupied attacking them and you can freely invade. I advise you ally yourself to Portugal immediately, your historical friends, plus there's a chance they'll dynasty will die out, you'll get a union over them, which is amazing. Uh, you also have another couple unfriendly events. You're going to have one, which is the Castilian Civil War. Um, if you have a Regency Council, claim weaker than 80 or a female heir you're going to get a miniature civil war. Luckily, it seems to be less dangerous than, you know, a normal civil war. It's only seven unrests, not ten. So it's easier to solve. Um, once you're done, you'll have an a, a idea, a choice between two outcomes where you can draw closer to Portugal or Aragon. But since Aragon usually hates you, I tend to do the draw closer to Portugal. Um, you want to get the Iberian Union over Aragon, so you tend not to want to kill them. It can fire, I think, any time before 1500, so that's something to watch out for. Uh, you do start with one of the few provinces in Europe with a gold mine, La Mancha, here. Um, I advise you try and get that all the way up to 10. Anything above 10, you've got a bigger chance of it depleting. I've never had a gold mine deplete, so I don't know what happens. Um, but that will help you finance a lot of stuff for gold. On the other hand, you then have to watch out for inflation. So. Uh, overall, your provinces are fairly rich. They're not as rich as France's, but they're, a lot of them are 10 or more development, which will help. Um, it's one reason you are a great power with barely even conquering anything once you get, you know, Aragon, which is a, almost a great power in their own right, and you conquer Granada, you're going to be easily a solid great power. You've got a natural barrier to invasion to the north. To the south, you have to cross through the Strait of Gibraltar and you can usually develop a navy to defend your coastline. Um, so in terms of what you should do, I advise invading Tlemcen if you're fairly good. If not, just do the simple conquer Granada. You'll get other missions to invade North Africa just due to being Castile. Um, you do have to watch out for Aragon and France forming an alliance and attacking you, but if you can ally yourself to France, Aragon won't dare attack you. Um, which is really nice. Um, you really want that Iberian Union. It's probably one of the best events in the entire game. Um, at some point, you're going to want to take... Uh, there's a mission, I think, to take Melilla down here and invade some of Morocco. If you can, it'd be cool if you could pick up the Moroccan's gold province down here. Um, you could probably feed it to Tlemcen, leave them a vassal. They'll give you money. Um, after that, you want to start expanding abroad. Um, you can't get to the New World, usually either to you hit Diplotech 7, or you get the... Ow, cat. You get the third exploration ideas, which gives you greater colonial range. You start with the Canaries, which gives you a huge boost to getting to the New World, or into colonizing um, the Mali, Songhai, Africa region, or even going down to the Congo. Um, your ideas are pretty good. You start out with 15% morale, which is huge. It's almost um, the same as France, France's Elan, but they have 5% more. But it's one of the better morale ideas. Plus, you start with it, which means if you really want to, you can snag the 5% discipline from the Reconquesta and beat up France before they hit Elan, because you'll have better morale and 
you'll have less troops, but you can easily overcome that with better morale and discipline. Um, you also start out with one missionary, which is really nice, but not the most useful thing in the world, because Muslim provinces at the beginning of the game have negative two local missionary strengths, so you can't convert them even if you wanted to. The only way you're going to be able to do that is if you have an Inquisitor advisor, and you're very stable. Um, you also will get the Spanish Inquisition at some point, which is your second idea, or you'll get something equivalent to it when you conquer Granada. You'll be able to forcefully convert these provinces, then deal with revolt later. But once you get the Spanish Inquisition, it will allow you to convert Muslim provinces, not with ease, but you'll definitely be able to convert them. Unlike most nations of the game, that's pretty much why that ex idea exists. Your next one gives you a colonist. So you, technically you don't even really need to go exploration if you don't want to, but you want to get to the new world as soon as possible. Um, it just kind of gives you the finishing idea to from the um, um, exploration ideas, allows you to fabricate claims in colonial regions, which is kind of awesome. And it also gives you free colonists, which means Castile, Spain can have the most colonists in the game, which means you should be able to develop a colonial empire faster than anyone except for Portugal early on. Portugal is probably going to get the first um, colonial nation, but you can beat them there if you try. The next one gives you two papal influence, which means you should always stay Catholic. Going Protestant is not good for Spain. Um, late game, if the HRE turns to Protestantism, England and all these people, you can easily control the Curia and the Holy See and get all the benefits of being Curia controller fairly consistent, consistently, which are huge. You also are going to start out with a fair amount of cardinals. Uh, your next one is global tariffs and provincial trade power. Just get you more money from trade in your colonial nations. Spanish Armada is nice. Gives you more sailors, heavy ship combat ability, which is rather huge because your um, heavy ships are what you really kind of want to get towards the late game because galleys suck in the open sea. And obviously you want trade ships, but that's out of it. But with the heavy ship combat ability, if you build a large enough navy, you could theoretically beat England in a naval war. It's still tough to say that you could. Uh, you'll get a golden age, yearly prestige, your finishing idea, global settler increased 25%. All the more reason to play a colonial empire, because you'll be able to colonize faster and more provinces than anyone else in the game. For national ideas, I usually recommend the first one not be exploration. I usually recommend the first one be religious to get the divine supremacy missionary strength, which means plus that, and then if you get in the second idea, you get uh, Spanish Inquisition, you'll be able to convert Muslim provinces fairly quickly. That's not as a necessity if you vassalize Tlemcen early on. Um, in that case, usually you want to start exploration, and you want to probably try and colonize the Caribbean or Brazil first. Ideally what you want to do is kind of hopscotch your way with provinces or land to either the Inca or the Maya. Uh, no, the Inca or the, the Aztec. The Maya are around there too, but the Maya are good too. And then you want to invade them. I think you get some ideas to help you invade, and at some point you'll get an um, explorer named Christopher Columbus who will help you explore to the New World, which is really nice. I advise trying to pick up the Caribbean as one of your colonial nations. North America is not too beneficial for you because their trade routes don't go back to your Sevilla trade center um, up here. So colonizing, you know, modern-day Canada or the United States, uh, it's not really that useful. But everywhere else in the old world, you can channel trade to your trade node. It shouldn't be that hard to make the Sevilla trade node the highest. Uh, income trade node in the game. Uh, you do have to compete a little bit with Portugal for trade, but you can easily take Sevilla, hand it to your burgers, and that'll overcome a good portion of it. They'll still be making a lot of money off of your trade, but if you're allies with them, it's not the worst thing in the world. Plus, they'll colonize and they'll drag trade to you as well. Um, if you want to go historical, there's a achievement called Imperio um, Espanol, I think, which is the Spanish Empire. For that, you have to own Florida, Mexico, um, Central America, um, 
where the Inca are, Rio de Plata, and some of the Caribbean, I think. It might not be the Caribbean, and you'll get that achievement, which is a fun one to get. And you can do it mostly by colonizing. You'll have to conquer both the Inca and the Aztec and the Maya. But by the time you get there, you should have a tech lead. You'll have massive amounts of morale, and it should be pretty easy. For your third idea, I usually recommend defensive. Get that bonus morale of armies. Stack with your 15, you're looking at 35%. Um, you're looking at 30%, which is really solid. France will only have 35, assuming they take defensive. So, which means you would be one of the larger military powerhouses in the game. Uh, usually for their fourth, I recommend you stack expansion or your third depending if you go religious or not uh, give you the extra colonists additional merchants settlers that allow you to expand towards asia i advise you get to asia try and set up trade routes there um, at some point you should be large enough to simply threaten war on most of the nations around in that region so you can easily pick up centers of trade or just rich trade node provinces and then if you create trading companies, get enough trade, you'll get free merchants. So you can steer a lot of the world's wealth back to the Sevilla trade node. Um, after that, it's kind of pick what you want. Uh, I usually recommend you either try quantity if you're fighting lots of land wars, offensive if you're fighting lots of land wars, naval ideas if you want to try and beat England in a <laughs> naval battle. Uh, maritime ideas are not that useful for you. Um, I mean, you can take them if you want to. Influence is surprisingly not that useful. Trade is useful if you want more money from trade. I never have taken diplomatic or espionage really as Castile or Spain. Innovative, not that useful. Uh, administrative, you really don't need it because you're going to be colonizing more than conquering. But if you want to conquer some in Europe, then take that for the reduced core creation cost. Economic, you want to take at some point for the inflation reduction because you're going to be getting lots of gold both from La Mancha, a Moroccan gold province if you take it, or your colonial nations if they have gold mines. Humanist, you don't want to take because you're going to take religious. Aristocratic, not useful. Quality, not really that useful. So that's roughly what you should try and do as Castile. Now, other quick things. You start out with one of the worst heirs in the game, 000 heir, who's infertile. I advise you, if you can, immediately disinherit him. Uh, you'll probably pick up another ruler at some point. You may, in fact, get a female ruler, get the Iberian Union. You're almost inevitably going to get a Castilian Civil War, no matter what you do. Um, so, you'll suffer through it. It should end fairly quickly. Just be aware it's coming. And uh, once it's done, you don't have to deal with it again. So, that's roughly what you should try and do as Castile. Get Portugal as an ally. Try to get France as an ally. Kill Granada, maybe vassalize Tlemcen, get Iberian Union over Aragon, and then colonize. You can pretty much sit out most of the wars in Europe just from that. Or let uh, Aragon and Naples or France handle them all. So, thank you guys all for watching this video. Hopefully it has helped you. Please leave questions, comments below. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I have other guides you should take a look at. I also do Let's Plays of this game. And uh, thank you guys all for watching. I'll see you, hopefully, in another video. Bye!